thank you for uh, taking this um, for doing this lesson on short notice. <laughs> <laughs> no worry, no worry. Um, well, um, Tyler, um, tell me a little bit about your background in chess. Where, when did you start playing? Why did you start playing? What is your main goal right now in chess? What would you like to achieve, basically? Yeah, um, it's kind of funny that you ask that because I, I, I sometimes coach some, some beginners myself and that's the very first thing I ask them. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I played as a kid um, way back when, but never very competitively um, because I, I live in an area, well, first of all, chess is not very popular in Canada. So, okay. so and, and I live on an island, so there was very little access to any chess here. And this was like before the internet. Um, so, <laughs> Uh, so I played it as, as a kid, but I, you know, I, I kind of only read like uh, a few articles and maybe like a half a chess book. Um, and then I got into it as an adult uh, almost three years ago now. And so I am, you know, obviously an older chess player, but I've been trying very hard, working very, very hard. Um, I, I play every day. Uh, usually, oh. usually in the evenings, uh, I stream whenever I play. So I usually play about three to four hours every day. And um, before COVID, I I was attending over the board tournament. So I was traveling around here to them. I played in around nine or ten in 2019. Mm. Um, so and... do you have do you have a a uh, fee rating? No, it, it's very in North America. It's it's hard to find fee day rated oh. events. Um, okay, okay. yeah, so it, there are some, but it's, it's usually just like the very big tournaments and it's, even so it's, it's hard to, uh, not many people are FIDE rated. So it's, yeah, it's okay. Scary. Yeah. Yeah. Understand. Okay. Okay. And where, and right now your rating on Lyches is about 2,100, about what? Sorry. Yeah. Um, well, it, it was, um, on Rapid, it's 2168, I believe. And okay. on Blitz, it was 2112. But over the past month, I, it's nosedives. I've had trouble on that. Um, and on, on Classical, it's around 2050. Hmm. OK, OK, great, great. What? Well, yeah, um, I don't think that the age is a problem in chess. I actually, after this, uh, whole thing about the quarantine and well I saw the uh, super uh, famous series the Queen's Gambit I actually have been I've been receiving more uh, students older than me something that mm. actually it doesn't happen too much yeah well so, but you're, you're, you're quite young though right you're like 19 was it yeah yeah uh, yeah 19 and this yeah. and this year 20 yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like twice your age, so, <laughs> but, but okay, I do, okay. I do put a lot of effort into it. Um, so I, I'm ready to work hard. Great. Great. Well, um, I'm trying to invite you to analyze war. The invitation doesn't get you. Yeah. Um, um, I don't see, um, I don't see it. Maybe you can just link it to me in Skype. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That would, that would be better. Give me a chance. Sure. And, and then. Here you go. Yeah. And can, yeah. You, can you see me on, on Skype in video? No, I can't. Well, oh, really? Why not? It's not a problem. Oh, it, it, oh, it's on your end? You can't? No, it, no. I actually, I can't. Oh, that's weird. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, oh uh, hang on one second. Oh, don't worry. Um, I can turn that on, I think. Oh, I turned it on, but I don't think it's appearing. Not oh, yet. Oh, because I have to... I'll choose the other webcam. There we go. There we go. Uh, um, it should, you should see it in a few seconds now. Oh, yeah. You say, okay, there we go. Um, yeah. I forgot to do that. I, I, I was seeing myself in the streaming software instead. There we go. Okay, I, I received the link. I'm going to open that up now in the chess here. Okay. Uh, by the way, I actually looked at some of your past streamings, and I'm very happy with uh, your style of not only playing chess but analyzing your games it's mm. something that let, let me tell you that not many people do and something very very useful for, for a mm. chess player great uh, if you just give me one second here if you don't mind i'm just going to load up the uh 
the study in the stream. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so don't worry. <laughs> there we go. Okay, good to go. Everything looks good on stream here. Okay, everything is great. Everything's great. Okay, great. Uh, well, I'm going to start by, well, actually, when I get new students, I always like some. I prepare a test of knowledge. Okay. <laughs> I'm not and... nervous now. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's not what you think because actually the first position that you are going to see it's probably the easiest position in chess. I'm quite sure that you are going to laugh after you've seen that. Uh, I but better get it right. <laughs> I really need to do. <laughs> I really need to do because I get a student, for example, ask me about uh, opening lessons, mid game lessons, and mm -hmm. then when I look at his games, yeah, they play the opening very well as we. Uh, prepared, but then in the end game, in a totally winning end game, they lost, mm. and then they blame on me, uh, <laughs> saying that this kind of thing. So yeah, uh, I always start from that experience. I always start by giving this little test that okay. is not difficult. Uh, indeed, the first position that we're going to see is this one. It says yeah. checkmate with the queen. I'm quite sure that you know how to checkmate with the queen. You right? hope so. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, but so... because you know that, let's do this different because i'm going to put a a, a, a clock okay oh and no okay. <laughs> increment okay. increment <laughs> no <laughs> okay no increment okay and well let's try to do it at least this checkmate in less than one minute okay oh okay. That, i thought you'd say one second okay <laughs> no no one second is... okay. okay well i when, when i when i do it um online i i don't do it the most efficient way i do it the simplest way so Okay, great. Yeah. So, you ready? Yeah, I don't see the clock though. Will that will that start or? No, because uh, actually in Lishes there is not a mm. possible way to pull a clock. So I just go to Google and pull a clock and there. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, that okay. would be you nice. Ready? That'd be a nice feature. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Yeah. So okay. I, st yeah, I start. Yeah. I start yeah. whenever. Yeah, it starts. Okay. Yeah. Oh man, I'm so wait. I, I'm so nervous here. <laughs> I've, <laughs> no. I've never been tested. It's like, oh man. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So I, I do I do I you want me to play the Yeah, yeah, you are playing with we are playing with white. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I moved. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You make the move on the yeah, board. Yeah, the board? yeah, I made the move. Oh. Is it not synced up? Uh No, I I don't see the move on the board. That's weird. Um I do, oh, make sure that you did you put me as a contributor? What, sir? Uh a contributor. If you go to member Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm a contributor and Oh, it's it's not synced up yet. Oh, that's the, that's the thing that I don't see you like a member of the of the. Oh yeah, I I'm in there, but it's like a public study, I think. Exactly. So you, you there we go. Nah, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you make it make it uh, contributor. I'm spectator yeah. right now. There we go. Uh, okay, okay. Sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Yeah. The easiest way, you see, okay. it, mm. it was in less than 30 seconds. Mm. <laughs> you see that it's not complicated in this test. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the another one. And uh, now uh, the checkmate, uh, probably the easiest checkmate and the quick, the, the, fa the fastest checkmate that you are going to do today, it's the checkmate with two rooks. Okay. Okay. So let's move on. And you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, I don't think this was the <laughs> yeah not the fastest it. way. Okay. Oh, I wish you you can't pre move in the study. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. In less than thirty seconds. Okay. Now I think that for my next students and for the next checkmates, we are going to set that guard in less than thirty seconds. That's it. <laughs> okay. That would be great. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. The next one. Obviously, in this test, we are going to check everything. We are going to check endgame. We are going to check tactics. We are going to check strategy. Okay. 
but we we'll start with the basics and now this checkmate with one single root. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not efficient. I, <laughs> no. I, but I just do it where I don't have to think. I just make the box smaller. I... Exactly. That's what. Right. Right. And okay. Well, everything was fine until this point where we missed checkmating one. Oh, right. right. But that parasite, that parasite. Well, maybe yeah. I, I did that on purpose to psychological battle if it's a match game and I want to. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No. Yeah, I missed that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, but I, I mean, it's okay. That's the process <laughs> that you need to apply in this end game. Uh, make the uh, box the box smarter. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's all, basically. Great. Nothing that I, nothing matter that I can say. Let's move on to the next endgame that most people think that it's difficult. And actually, I think it's one of the easiest. It's even easiest, easier than this one. It's the checkmate with two bishops. Oh, man. I haven't practiced this. In, I haven't practiced it. Um, I'd actually do better with the knight and bishop, I think. But OK. <laughs> yeah, OK. Um, I know that it's. But I, the thing is, I'm not sure if I can do it in under a minute. But. Uh, I've never I've never practiced this because I figure I can figure it out over the board, but I guess we'll give it a shot here. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Um, so I believe like we want to centralize. We want to centralize uh, the two bishops, but right now the that's, king is cut off. So right now I'm just going to bring in my king. That's exact. That's indeed the first step to win this end game. Centralize the bishops. You're right. I'm still going to bring in the king as, as much as I can. Right. And uh, now let's bring here. Uh, I'm a, if I go bishop e4, there's king. Uh, no, yeah, we're good there. So now, OK, the king yeah. is now. Okay. Yeah, my king is kind of trapped. Yeah. Now it's a matter of, yeah, exactly. I'm going to bring in the king. Great move, great move. Okay. After the... Sorry, what was that? Uh, hi, hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I can think, you? oh, I think uh, something happened. Uh, you got disconnected for a second. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, for a second. Okay. Sorry for that. It happens a lot. Actually. Okay. Okay, KDA. Actually, give me a sec right sure. now, yeah. uh, please, to yeah. go to check something about the internet connection and make it better. Yeah, Do no that. problem, no problem. And that way it doesn't happen. Okay, so for that, give me one minute. Yeah, no problem. Oh, man. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. The tests are easy, but I'm... I've never been tested like this before. It's <laughs> even just like mating with the queen is scary. It's funny. Okay, now I'm back. Now okay, it should be better. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, so okay, so that's your move here. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to think what my end result is. I I guess I'm going to have to mate in the corners. It's the only thing that makes sense to me. So. Um, yeah. The first step is to centralize the bishop. The second mm -hmm. step, once you get my king into a side of the board or in the eight rank, is you have to decide between this corner or this corner. Uh, How uh, would you like? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. It, should, it shouldn't matter though, right? Because I've got both bishops. But you mean just, just to focus on one? But um, e Exactly. Yeah. If you can decide one, the process is it's easier. I'm actually so going, to, I'm, like I'm going to try to uh, get you over here. Oh, I guess that, that um, I wonder if, if I could lose it. 
no, I can't. Okay, yeah, so that doesn't work. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that does not work at all. Okay. Hmm, interesting. The thing is, between this corner and this corner, okay, visually six, it's the the right move to drive my my king to the eight a square. Because now, from this moment, the method is just cutting off my squares at the left of the king. Okay, so basically, you want to cut off this square, then this square, then this square, then this square, and this checkmate. Yeah. Yeah. This is similar to the W maneuver in the bishop and knight method. I'm. Yeah, it's yeah, similar. Yeah, like similar. So. Okay. Um, I guess I could do this. Yeah, that's the move. And. Um... I'm wondering if I'm thinking about king b6 first because I can always play bishop e6 after and I'm covering everything. So exactly. that's yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I'm, I'm borrowing from the w method in the <laughs> bishop and knight. Okay, so now um, I think we go here. We can and then be, it'll be very easy to to waste a move. Yeah, exactly. With two bishops. Yeah. Smart. There we go. Oh. And the check. Yeah, I think that that's the first time I actually did it. I think uh, I've never, <laughs> I, I never really practiced it because I, I figured over the board I could hopefully figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, again, for most people, they think that this is a hard checkmate. I don't mm. think so. I think that, as you said, it's quite. It's a matter of practicing this to automatize this, like any other checkmate, basically. Yeah. Okay. So, do you have any doubts? Something that is not clear about this ending? Sorry, could you repeat that, please? Do you have any doubt? Something that it's not clear about this endgame? No, no. Um, I, 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 again, I think it's, I think it's something that you can kind of figure out over yeah. the board. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to the next one, which is another basic endgame. I don't uh, usually test the knowledge, the knowledge about the checkmate uh, with the knight and bishop because, mm. first of all, I think it's more uh, intermediate advanced. And second one, it's not something that happened. I all. know, yeah, you'll get it maybe once in your life, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I actually, I, I am the master, and I never checkmate him with the knight and bishop. It's mm. something that I, perhaps are in the future, but right now. Okay, so in this end game, um, I want you to ask you. I want to ask you something. Okay. It's white to move. Okay. Mm -hmm. White is winning or it's a draw, and why? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so my studying of Dabrowski's Endgame Manual better kick in here. Um, well, it should be winning because I, for a number of reasons. One of them is I think once, if we can get our king two squares ahead of our pawn, it's an automatic win. Yeah, exactly, that's yeah. the rule. And that's actually what you should do in this endgame. So let's play, let's play this. You are okay. playing with the white. Okay, so eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I'll go this way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you uh okay. So if I if I go straight ahead I'll get the, the distant top position. So I'll do that. Yeah. And um I can I can uh get the the direct op position here. Exactly. Yes. And I'm I'm and I'm also on one of the key squares. So all you have to do is get to one of the key squares and that's an that's a that's a forced win. Um because you can always, because I can always sidestep. Exactly, yeah. and this is the important move. Okay, yeah. something that I always recommend is to forget about this pawn uh, mm -hmm. in the in the king side because this is a draw. Okay, once mm -hmm. the king is a uh, side of the of the king of the pawn, this is a completely draw. So it's something that yeah, we want to avoid. And yeah, king e4 as you said, king d6, and then the end game. Uh, it's easy, yeah. Yeah, and I can just keep doing it all the way. Exactly. That's basically um, all. And um, I'm wondering if uh, there's more, if I should go king f seven. Yeah, because I'm always touching. I'm always touching. Uh, yeah. E six. Yeah. E six. Mm -hmm. Eight. 
I don't want to go too fast and screw it up. So. <laughs> no, no. <That's... laughs> perfect. Okay. Literally perfect. 10 of 10. Uh, I think the best performance that I've ever seen about this oh, angle. Oh, great, really. great, great. Okay. <laughs> those are the concepts. Those are the great ideas. Now, what happens if I go king d1? This is a draw or this is still winning for white? Ah, oh, boy. Um... I'm counting scores, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Well, if I think black can get the distant opposition was king d7. So I think that is a draw. Yeah, that's actually a draw. But let's play it, okay? I'm going to play with white. You are going to play with black. I'm going to try to confuse you and try to complicate okay. the game as much as I can. Yeah. And yeah, your main goal is to draw the position. Okay. Yep. But I oh I, I thought you said I thought you but you're playing. Oh yeah, sorry. Playing okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. I gotcha. Okay. No worries. Great. Great. That's an important move. And this should be a draw right here. Yeah. It should be a draw. Let's play into the end. And then try to configure things a little bit. Always go straight back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. One more. Just to check. And that's an easy draw. Right. All perfect. The only uh, suspicious move <laughs> is this one with skinny face. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, distant opposition. So I. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um. I also, there is also another really cool concept in this endgame, which is um, perhaps easier to follow. Is the only thing that you need to do with black is to keep your king in front of the center, in front of the pawn. If you keep your king in front of the pawn, it's a draw. There is no way to white to complicate this motion. So right now, for example, your king in front of the pawn, your king in front of the pawn. That's basically all. And once my king goes to d5, you king, your king cannot go to e6. So yeah, now we we get the opposition. So yeah, okay, basically that's all. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I got fancy there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you one position. Um, this is the easiest position in chess. So I want you to solve this position in less than five seconds. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that's true. No pressure. It's possible. Do okay. you think it's really, really possible? Okay. So basically, I don't want to solve the position, but I, I want you to tell me if it's a draw or it's winning for white, okay? Okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Five seconds. It's winning <laughs> or it's a draw? Oh, God. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a win. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's white to move, right? Yeah, it's white to move. Um, no, it's a draw. It's a draw, 100% draw. Sorry, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I feel, I feel pressured. I, 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 <laughs> I yeah, see, I yeah, see. Yeah. Why is a draw? Well, first of all, it's a rook pawn, you know, so. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and also black is in the square. You sure black is on the square? Oh, come on. Oh, white gets to move two, <laughs> two, two moves with the pawn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Basically, man, uh, this, this is embarrassing. I want to... Oh, man. <laughs> no, oh. worry. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it's the five-second thing that got me. If you, if you, yeah, exactly. If you watch me uh, play, I get so pressured on the clock when I play. Even if I have, like, 30 seconds left, I will, I will blunder... 
just stupid <laughs> moves, but yeah. It's natural and it's something that we're going to train, okay? No, no worry. <laughs> yeah, we're going to train how to play with pressure. So yeah, basically that's uh, what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear the concept of the rule of the square. Mm -hmm. This is applied right now with A4 and yeah, the opponent's king is out of the square. It's something very, very basic, but believe me that even grandmasters sometimes forget about this concept because let's see the next position. It's not an empty position, but it's sort of a puzzle basically. Okay. Um, in this position, well, the only thing is that I copy and paste this position, but so the black pawns are going there and the white pawns are going in this way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in this position, black played queen g2 check and white played queen g3. Queen g3. Is this a good move? A bad move? A normal move? It's winning white? It's winning black? What is your opinion about this position? I think that's a bad move. I believe that black can promote here and also at the same time fend off these pawns if white tries to push those central pawns. Um, white should be outside of the square and uh, we should be able to queen. Yeah, because uh, so after queen takes, king takes, what is the move? Uh, yeah, then we're just pushing a5. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And you promote because as you said, the opponent's uh, king is out of the square now um do you is know this a, is this a magnus carlson game exactly you you saw the video no i didn't but uh someone in the chat just mentioned it so yeah, yeah. i could have <laughs> I, I could have pretended and taken credit but <laughs> <laughs> yeah because uh actually uh carlson was playing black and white was the grandmaster alexander Grichuk, which is another super super mm -hmm. grandmaster mm -hmm. from russia i'm sure that you have heard about about him yeah, he, his time control, he plays his time management like me, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the thing that he's a uh, grandmaster uh, and he basically forgot about mm. this rule for a moment. Obviously, this is probably a time travel thing too, but mm. it's something that it's fantastic for me. It shows, it's choking me, basically. Okay, next position. Okay, now we are going to apply all the concepts that we've been talking about, but in a practical position, okay? Because now it's the white to, it's white to move, and how would you play here and why? <sighs> oh, okay. So I can tell you right now, I'm spotting a breakthrough on G4, so G4, H5. Um, and we're, we're, our king is, is within the square of the, F, or the, uh, the C pawn, so I think we can just play G4 right away. Great, great. That's the solution I wanted to hear. Yeah. G4, pawn takes, and then? Yeah, h5. Okay, h5. And what happens if black goes to c4? Um, yeah, we're still fine after king d4. King e4, king, rather. King, king, king e4, yeah. King e4. No. Yeah, that's the important move here. Yeah, king e4, and that's all because we are inside of the square. Mm -hmm. And while the opponent's king is out of the square. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Next position. How do you feel now? I'm still nervous, man. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> no. I've never been tested like this, so. but it's fun though. It's fun. Yeah. It's, uh, positions are easy. Okay. Maybe this is a little bit harder, but I think that you are going to solve this easy too. It's why to move. The question is, it's why winning, it's a draw and why? Hmm. This is an interesting one. I mean, if out of uh, the first reaction, if I had to choose a side, I would rather be white. I'm just wondering if we're okay. winning or not. But I, I like white. Be well, at least I think, yeah, I should like white. Um, <laughs> hmm. So um, my plan of attack right now is to like have white support a break on c4 while at the same and then and then hang back and um 
basically have an outside pass pawn and take this e, take this e4 pawn. Now I'm, I'm just wondering if we can do that. Exactly, because uh, if we can do that, we are going to win, as you said. Uh, we want to uh, create a pass pawn on the queen side, but at the same time, we need to bother about this pawn. Mm -hmm. so well, I mean, the, the, yeah, the first natural move for me would be would be king e2, but I'm not so certain that it's that simple. Um, but I, I know that, I mean, obviously we have to stay within the square, so we can't venture too far away. But like, let's just say king e2, king d5. Um, and then I'm wondering, let's say king e3, king e5. And I'm wondering if we could play b4 and cb. Uh, that, pro that probably does not work. Uh, no, that won't work. And then black would have floating pawns too. Uh, oh, the, right. the, the floating square, which uh, Dabrowski's endgame manual. Yeah, so that doesn't quite work. So um, this, but I still feel like white, white. It feels like white should have an edge here. Yeah, this is the kind of endgames that you don't know how to play, but you know that you are winning at some point. It just feels like that, basically. So there is a concept in and basic concepts about in the endgames, which is the concept of triangulation. I think it's called mm. in mm. English too. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, tri 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 triangulation. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um. So, is that applicable to this position? Hmm. I'm wondering if we go back to that position where the kings are on e3 and e5, and then if we triangulate there, then black is in Zugzwang. Black moves. I guess he has to go to d6. Um, and then we grab the pawn. So yeah, okay, maybe that's the trick there. Yeah, so we go to- we, How can we get it? Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll triangulate once we're on e6. So we start with king e2, king d6, king e5, king, oh wait, sorry. Um, let me start over. King e2, king <laughs> d6, uh, king e3, king e5, and then you can triangulate, uh, number of ways um i often get confused on which way to triangulate but i would i don't want to so I, I would just go back then i think uh then king e2 then i think that after king d4 or king f4 both options yeah are totally crushing white because the opponent's king is going over a side and up supporting this pawn oh. and also capturing this and this pawn. So yeah, triangulation is the solution, but it's not, uh, this is not the way to get it. Okay. Uh, in, in most books, actually, it's shown like that. Okay. It shows like you go in front of the pawn, then you go to a side, then you yeah. go again, and that's the, the triangle that you want to aim basically. But um, not it's not always in that way. Okay. We can form the triangle pattern. In, in another way. So basically, yeah, this is the first move. King d6. If you go king e3, uh, yeah. he's, your opponent is going to play king e5. Yeah. And from this position, it's just, yeah. Yeah, he's got opposition, so he has a wide. vehicle so basically to here, outflank. Yeah. Yeah, so here, so here. So um, for example, in this position, how would you. Uh -huh. Yeah, sorry, there's a bit of audio delay. Um, no, no worries. Yeah, so here, uh, uh, king d2. Yeah, so distant, exactly. distant opposition again here. I should have seen that, yeah. Mm. Yeah, distant opposition as well, yeah. King f5, and then the same position, but we get it yeah. with white, and it's black storm, basically. Yeah. King e3, and it's just winning. Yeah, I should have seen that, man. <laughs> <laughs> no worry, no worry. But even that basic endgames are something that we don't train too much, so it's natural that we forget some concepts, okay? So, no worry. Actually, there is a cool guideline that I use a lot when I forget about one concept in the endgame. It's called, the, the book is called um, One Endgames That You Must Know uh, from yeah, Alejandro yeah. Larry or, or well, yeah. I, don't, I don't remember. Yeah, who, yeah, yeah. I think it's Jesus de la Villa. Yeah, Jesus yeah. de la Villa, yeah. yeah. So it's a good book to keep it like a guideline. Once you know that you forget about one concept in the endgame, you go to that book and you go just to share that specific part. Mm. I think it's quite useful.
Okay, so we are finishing almost with the end case position. There are this one and one more. So right now it's black to move. How would you think here? How would you play? Okay. And what? Black. So we have to. This is a Philidor position. So exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So rook. Uh, so so we're we're going up the board, right? Like we're we're we're. we're mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So so rook. Uh, like we're looking at it from white's perspective or black. I, for black. What is the move for black? Yeah. I know. I know. But I'm sorry because I don't. I don't have the board annotations on. Okay. This is the this is the 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 first rank and this is the eighth rank. So the pawn is going there. Oh, okay. So we're looking at it from White's perspective. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So rook rook h6. Yeah. Rook h6. Yeah. After e5. Um. Oh God. It's, okay. So I know that we basically we want to encourage e6. So. Um, Uh, no worry, take your time. I think, uh, I would, I would play just rook, rook, uh, rook g6. Why rook g6? Explain to me your thought process behind. Well, I'm I'm trying to keep the king cut off so that the king doesn't um, basically infiltrate past that rank, and I'm I'm waiting for White to get exhausted and play e6 eventually, so I can go behind it and give checks from behind. Congratulations, because that's exactly the concept that appears basically in books. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I think that. I go uh, to Wikipedia and look at and search for this position, and it's exactly, the <laughs> okay. it's exactly the concept. Yeah, rook d6, because after e6, as you said, what is the next move? Yeah, then uh, rook b, or sorry, rook g1. Exactly, and that's all, because after d6, you are going to check the king yeah. until you... Yeah, the king has no shelter now. Yeah, so, so exactly. yeah, rook yeah. d1, yeah. Great. And the last basic position that we need to... No, yes or yes. There is no option. It's this one. Okay. Ooh, uh, okay. And I think uh, that if, if you if you uh, solve a uh, filler, you are going to solve this. So so um. Okay, so it's it's um it's white to move, and we're going up the board, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this should be the Lucena position. Yeah, exactly. Um, we have to build a bridge on the fifth rank, um, but there's other ways to do it too, actually, um, Lucena. But the the main theme is often building the bridge, and you want to cut the king off uh, two two files away from the pawn. So this should be still doable. There should still be winning for white. First of all, I think, but I've never seen it in this position. Normally, the king is not so high up, the black king. <laughs> but, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so... This is actually what could happen in a real game, because in a real game, the opponent's king is going to try to bother mm. the opponent's rook. Mm. Yeah, so I know we, we got to keep that king cut off. So I'm... Um, but I... Uh, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm thinking rook f5. Mm -hmm. King g6, for example. Yeah. Keep, keep that rook. Um, I'm so used to the king not being so high up. <laughs> okay. um, I'm just wondering if we have time to play then rook, uh, rook d five. But then I'm worried about the king's the king slipping in. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We are letting up on his king. And um, actually, rook f5, I think that white is, I'm sure that white is winning in the position there. Um, it's, still, it's still winning for white. But there is, this is actually not the right method. Mm. The Lucena method is not over the 5th rank. Actually, in the Lucena endgame, you want to put your rook on the 4th rank, okay? In this distance. 
because believe it or not, it's enough. But how? Let's let's try to see. King g6, for example. And what is the next move that appeared in the majority of books about Lucena? Hmm. I'm thinking if I go if I go King e7 now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To push d8 and black. Right now, the only option is to check. Yeah, and then we will zigzag our way up. So uh, king d6, uh, and mm -hmm. then um, king c, or yeah, or king c6, yep. Yeah. Um, now, then king d5. Important move, yeah. rook d2. Then rook d4. Exactly, that's all. Mm -hmm. And that's all. So we, we want to remember this, okay? Because it, this is actually a position that happen, uh, appears a lot, okay? Yeah. In, in the endings. This is m much, much uh, more more casual than the end game with the knight and bishop, for example. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this and filler, I think that it's the, are the concepts that I've most applied really in the end games. Mm -hmm. So do you have any doubts, something that is not clear about these basic end games? I no, I, 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 you know, it, it, it always helps to have a refresher on them because, you know, uh, as you, as you can tell, like I know, put, I know them, but it's, you still forget a little, a few things like, uh, here, I, I thought it was a fifth rank, but it's, it's the fourth rank, for example. Yeah. And in believe me that it happens always. Okay. Mm -hmm. And to everyone, basically, even grandmaster has to uh, remember these concepts at some point. Okay. And it's really, really useful because I've seen, for example, um, international master that can't uh, checkmate with the bishop and knight, mm -hmm. for example, or even in the, And this is something that as we need to apply in this situation, basically, because yeah. the, in the most of the cases, we are going to get this position in time thrower. So it's something that we need to 100% mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. My okay. So let's move on now. We are going to test your tactical abilities. Oh, this is this is my weak point, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, what is your relationship with tactics in chess? I, I'm terrible at calculating and even more terrible at visualizing. Um, okay. I yeah I I can't I just I'm just terrible at it. Um, I've I've tried to work on it. Like I've I've done the woodpecker method. If you've heard of that course. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've I've done you know I've done that and I I, I can do the whole the whole book like well about a thousand of those puzzles and uh, I did it on video uh, I think three and a half hours for like Whoa. for the whole book but the thing is uh, I've it's I've it's mostly memorization it's not <laughs> you know um, I wanted to ask you that because I actually uh, thought some time ago uh, I started to practice in that method but um. Uh, I didn't have the time, and I'm not. I'm not quite sure if that really works. What is your opinion about that? Yeah, I've got mixed opinions on it. It 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 helped me recognize some patterns. Like there's uh, a pattern where you can all like, like knight takes f7, and you have a battery on the e file, and then you take mm -hmm. on e6, stuff like that. There's there's a few patterns like that, but overall, um, I'm not. I don't really think it's it would have. It's any more useful than just drilling regular puzzle mm -hmm. like uh, tactics puzzles. Um, okay. Uh, one nice part of it is that every single game, every single puzzle, is from a world championship game, so it's from a real game. Um, so that's kind of nice because you get a lot of positions from famous games. And but uh, yeah, I, I kind of have mixed feelings on it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. What? Well, let's see how. It helps you, and let's try to solve some position, some basic tactical position. Again, this is not a checkmate in 11 moves. This is not something mm. too difficult first. Then, obviously, we are going to increase the difficulty, the, difficult, okay. the, the, the problems, but let's start basics. Okay, I'm warning you that um, I'm really bad at <laughs> the tactics. Okay. <laughs> nah. okay. Um, it's way to move here. Mm -hmm. How would you play? Um, so there's, there's bishop f7. There's also queen f7. Queen f7 is mate, I believe. Yes. 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 You gotta be sure. That's the checkmate. Yeah, checkmating one. Easy, right? 
Yeah, it took me a while though. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Okay, let's move on. Next issue. We're going to start basic, but then we're going to complete the more things. Okay. Um, it's why to move here. How would you play? Um, well, first thing I'm looking at is is rook g6, but there's f take, so I'm not sure about that. Um, How is your how is your thought process until now? Yeah, well, I, <laughs> nothing. Uh, just, no, um, like yeah, I, I keep I keep looking at rook g six, and then I keep seeing f f f g, and um, and then I just keep looking for something after that. I I looked at some other ideas too, like um, like rook f seven, but then just queen takes, and um. Okay. Have you figured, sorry, sorry. Have, let me. Let me. Uh, what about? Okay, I'm thinking if bishop g6 and f g, then I'm wondering huh? if I then go. Well, if yeah, then 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 if I go rook takes g6, um, he has to give up the queen. So, okay, so that works in that line. So what if he takes with the h pawn? So bishop takes g6, h takes g6. Um, it's the same. Same thing. Then rook takes g6, f takes g6, queen takes g6, queen g7, queen g7, mate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's totally right. Uh, um, okay, after bishop takes, f takes, rook takes, pawn takes. Pawn takes is not the only possible mm. move for, for black. Black can also play king f7. Okay. Mm hmm. And perhaps it's still winning because after Rook G7, for example, we are going to catch the opponent's king, the opponent's queen. Sorry, and it's that line is great actually. It's winning for white, but um, there is an easier way to finish this game because we are talking about four, five mm -hmm. moves, and actually you can win in two moves right now in Madrid. Believe it or not. Uh, have you heard about the concept of checks, capture, and threats that appear in the cutoff calculation process? Well, I mean, I've heard that, um, yeah, you kind of go in that order uh, of, like, you look at all of the in, uh, the checks first and then captures and, and threats. I use that method, but in a different way, okay? We are mm -hmm. going to talk this in the next sessions that we're going to have just in calculation and the difficult stuff. But from now, a part of introduction is that... Um, Basically, what I do in real situation in games is that I look at all the checks possible, but just for five or ten seconds as much, okay? We should spend more time than that because uh, then we are going to have time trouble most of the time, okay? So right now, if we look at all the possible checks, it doesn't matter that at first they mm -hmm. look awful, okay? They look awful and they look horrible. What are, what are them? What are the possible checks? Yeah, I've already looked at queen h7 while you were talking. Um, that didn't seem to lead to anything. I'm looking now at I'm looking now at um, at uh, at Queen G6, but that doesn't seem to lead to anything. Um, and there's there's Queen F8 that definitely doesn't lead to anything. Um, those are all the checks that's you on sure? the board. No, oh, what? <laughs> what? No way. <laughs> Oh, what, 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 queen g7? Yeah. And then we have a double check with queen g6, queen g6. Oh my God. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Easy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the chat, the chat, uh, some people in the chat are surprised about this too, queen g7. Yeah. Yeah, queen g7. And I mean, 
it's natural that it, it it costs you a lot of time. It costs you a uh, brain work basically, because it's normal. It's natural that we at first don't calculate or don't even consider queen g7 because it's horrible. I mean, we are giving our queen for nothing. It seems at first, okay. But with time, we are going to learn that we need to basically unlearn what we've been mm -hmm. learning about uh, not sacrifice or not blundering, basically. Okay, we actually should consider blunders like this one, at least for five seconds. Because once we get, we are going to consider this in our real game, we are going to find some cool, cool ideas. For example, <laughs> so it opens up a world of possibilities that you wouldn't otherwise consider. Yeah, exactly. That's basically yeah, what uh, what we need to apply. Yeah, it's quite quite useful and improves creativity and other aspects of chess. But again, I'm again. I want to. I want to remark this because it's so important just during five or ten seconds okay mm -hmm. we shouldn't spend many, much time applying this okay um let's try with this position and let's try to apply the same okay it's why to move we are going to consider all the possible checks it doesn't matter our fears they look horrible Yeah, so I've already looked at rook h7. I don't think that works because uh, king takes and I, I, uh, I mean, we have, we have rook h6 and then king g8. And I just don't think we're getting anything there. Um, th let me look at, I might go back to that, but let's take a look at, because there's only other one, there's only one other check. So let's take a look at queen g7. King takes, oh, this is looking promising already. Then F6, um, and well, hang on, sorry. So Queen G7, King G7, F6, but then, oh yeah, actually we have enough time there because if the King goes back to H8, we have, we have Rook 4, H4, um, and he can't stop that. And if he goes to king g8, uh, we just have mate in one. So I, that's that's the line, I believe, queen g7. Yeah, actually, it's one of the possible lines to win. Queen g7, it's the first move. That's, there's not a doubt, doubt about it. And it's a move we need to consider because it's a check. It doesn't matter at first we are sacrificing the queen. And right now, f6 actually works quite well because after king h8, as you said, rook h4, um, actually... White is winning, black basically doesn't have any move. Um, also, another solution for this problem is rook g4, mm -hmm. which is a check, and king h8 and bishop f6. Oh, yeah, that's simple. Not sure yeah. if that uh, actually cost more time. No, it's almost the same. Three, three and four moves. No, it's okay. It's safer, though. It's a safer way because <laughs> it's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Do you have any doubt about the thought process about what no. I'm trying to meet with this? No, this, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, great. So let's move on to the next position. And it's something that is not easy at first, but after analyzing a lot of position with this basic thought process, we are going to improve a lot. So again, the same. It's why to move. How would you play here and why? What is the winning line? Okay, an interesting idea, just an interesting mm -hmm. idea, <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> is is knight d6. Um, just because if we get it on f7, that's mate. And even if the rook takes on g6, oh, sorry, it won't be. He have a square on g8, so that won't work. Okay. Um, that's great. I like that in a way. <laughs> yeah. Um, the funny thing is... That, Oh, I guess that didn't work either. Sorry, I was looking at something else too. Okay, that's too bad. That was looking interesting. Um, another 
interesting idea, but I don't think it works is F7. I know it's not a check, but F7. And if Rook takes Queen, then we, we Queen and then Queen takes and then, and then, uh, yeah, Rook F8. But I, yeah, I, that just doesn't seem like it's going to pan out. Um, yeah. almost. Okay. Um, if you want to look at the silly moves, um, actually there's, if, if I move the knight, we're actually threatening mate in one and I, I, I already looked at, I already looked at, um, rook g5. That was actually the very first move I looked at was rook g5. Um, thinking that if he took on g6, we have f7, but we'll, we'll be down a knight at the end of that. The, the problem I have here is always this, this G8 square is always a flight square for black. Yeah. Yeah, and we're considering great moves, uh, at least interesting moves. Um, but something that we're going, to, we need to yes or yes apply in our thought process is to have an order to arrange the ideas that we're getting, basically. From the most powerful or the most forceful moves to the my to the less forcing moves and the most forcing moves in check in chess again are checks after checks if checks don't work we look at possible captors which is another um forcing move and then threats moves like knight g5 knight d6 and f7 all of them are threats okay so if we look that if we see that checks and captors don't work then we consider those moves but at first we should avoid consider considering those moves because we're going to basically waste much time Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm looking for captures here. Um, I don't see any captures um, that aren't checks. Uh, so let's try to find checks. What are the possible yeah. checks? <laughs> I already looked at those. Nothing seemed to make sense. Um, uh, okay. Let's let's go one by one. Okay. So let's say exactly. queen queen h six bishop h six. Discard that, great, that's yeah. all. And then, what else? yeah, there's just, you know, no, no dark squared bishop. Okay, there mm -hmm. is queen h7. Oh, wait, that, that's looking interesting right now. Wait, queen h7, uh -huh. king h7, and, um, knight g5, double check, king h8. Um, and then, oh, then we have knight f7. Oh, that's nasty. Yeah, yeah, that's the solution. <laughs> that's the solution. Mm. As you say, that's I, you know, <laughs> it, that's twice now that there was a double check and actually double checks are one of my favorite things because it's so easy to calculate. Once you have a double check, you know that the king has to move no matter what. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I double checks are yeah. the most forcing moves in chess. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why it, it's always great. Really, it's a tool that helps a lot in real chess game it's this uh, calculating and have this order of mm -hmm. ideas okay so do you have any doubts i'm very clear about this example no i'm it's um yeah it's just funny because it's uh i'm not used to sacking the queen like that you know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's something that basically we don't train when we <laughs> learn chess yeah we don't have a topic called queen sacrifice always <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So let's change the things because now this is all about basic tactics. Okay. This is the uh, thought process that we're going later on uh, talk about it and practice. Let's move on to more more strategic positions, basically. Because right now, imagine that you're playing with white. Okay. There are several good moves, but I just want to hear your thought process and how you play. Okay. First of all, ideas. yeah. Okay. First of all. The position looks a little similar. I, um, I'm trying to identify what opening this is, but I don't think, I don't think I quite, I don't quite play this. It almost, yeah, I don't, I don't play this opening. So, but it, it almost looks a little bit like a French, um, like a French tarash. Um, at the same time, it, it also, yeah, but I, no, I don't, I, it just looks, it looks a little similar. To what I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so... Actually, it's a game from uh, Vienna. Over. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the F4, the, the F5 is open. 
So mm. yeah. Okay. So sorry. So 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 white to move, and um, we're looking for okay a tactic here. Let's see. Not really tactic. Oh oh. Okay. So so what are we looking for? Just a good move. Yeah, okay. just a good move, and just to hear your thought process. Oh, oh, oh sorry. How would you think here? With okay, you? how would I think here? Okay, well, I, I like the open F file that we have, as you mentioned. Mm. Um, I'm looking at possible breaks with C4. I think it might be possibly a little too early for that break. Um, we could also maybe be a little bit annoying on the B file. I like that we have the bishop pair. Overall, I believe I, I prefer white. I also think black, uh, black is going to be... He's going to have a headache if he ever tries to castle kingside. Um, yeah. So overall, I'm quite, I think white has a very pleasant position. Also, his bishop is, is it's blockading our pawn, but it's, it's kind of, it's, it's a little bit useless here. So that being said, what can we do to improve our position? Your thought process, your ideas that you told me some seconds ago, those are totally, totally all right, okay? Basically, as you said, white has an advantage here because it has the pair of bishop and uh, obviously by intuition, we can say that this is much slightly better for white, basically. But then, that's the thing. How can we improve our position? How would you, how would we play? Okay, um, well, we have a, since we have the bishop pair, our dark squared bishop should be our better bishop. I'm just one, like, we could work on ways to highlighting that bishop, but I don't really think you can do that in this position. It's, 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 it's kind of a, a bit of a closed position. One, I mean, the, the two, Okay, there's two things. First of all, the pawns are pointing towards the king side, which is kind of hinting that we should be attacking on the king side. Plus, we have the yeah. open F file. Um, but I don't really see. I don't see an immediate way to do that. Um, yeah, because basically the opponent's king is not castled yet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I at the same time I you know I, I as I said I think the C four break is is a little bit too early here and I, I was I've been looking you know maybe we do it's not really enough to do a minority attack with just the the A pawn like A four but you know Rook B one I keep looking at Rook B one as well but I just don't think it really it really doesn't do all that much like Rook B eight for example you know um, right. right I mean that you should keep playing with your instincts, basically, because rook b1 is the good move here that was played in the game. Now, the interesting, part is to under the interesting part is to understand why this is such a good move. First of all, this is what I called the gray line between the opening and the middle game, because it's some sort of a, a middle game position, but we have not complete our development, because we have the minor priest developed, but we have not de developed the queen and the rook on e1. The rook on f1 is already developed because it's, it's an open line, semi-open line, okay? But the basic idea that I want to mention here is that once you get this kind of position where you know that you have advantage, and but you don't have a tactical shoot immediately, try to look at your least active piece or your piece that is not doing anything and try to improve it. If you tell me right now queen d2 or rook b1, I would be happy, basically. Because those are moves that, yeah, it seems like it's not doing anything, but it's developing. And it's actually uh, improving the position of those pieces that are not doing anything right now. Yeah? Does it make sense? Yes, yes. Okay, do you have any doubt? No, no. Okay, okay so basically, when we are playing real situation games and we don't see a tactical shoot or something aggressive, we look at our least active piece and we improve the piece. Rugby one. 
a single move that, as you said, rook b8, and it seems like it's not doing anything. But if we compare the activity of this rook that is in a semi-open line with this rook, we can see that this rook is kind of trapped yeah, there. It's a little more passive. Yeah, active. passive. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, that's the idea of rook b1. In the game, b6 was played. Okay. So again, following this concept, how would you play here with white? Um, I'm just taking a look at possibly queen e2. We're connecting our rooks. The queen gets off the back rank, and maybe we get something like bishop b5. Um, actually, I wonder if we can even go in there. It'd be interesting, but <laughs> um, just an idea. I don't think it's a bad move uh, at all. Um, and actually, we might be able to play c4 after that. I think queen e2 is quite natural here. Yeah. Yeah, queen e2 is the is between the two best moves here, basically. The only thing is that I, I don't like at all is your idea with c4, because if we calculate a little bit after c4, black is going to take uh, d4. And after yeah. takes it, d4 is hanging at the end of the line. Okay. Yeah, I, I I thought maybe we have some pressure with rook d1. Yeah, we should prepare c4 by playing something like rook d1, but we are not going to play the rook d1 with this rook, and if we move this rook again. It's quite a slow plan, basically. Also, mm. black can always play knight f5, yeah, yeah. and it's more a weak square than a good square for us. Yeah, and it's it's very obvious what we're trying to do, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So in the game, queen e2 was played. Queen e2, it's a game uh, similar to your ideas to complete the development, connect the rooks. Okay, that's okay. Uh, that's actually again queen e2 and queen e2, both of them are the best moves in the position. Black plate cost. And okay. this is how we transform a strategic position into a tactical position. Yeah, I mean, the very, I mean, I, we're just waiting for him to do that, right? So the very first thing that you have to look at is uh, Greek sacrifice on h6. For sure. Um, yeah. And I mean, we have, we, we have a rook lift already, already prepared with the open f file to come in. So, okay, so bishop h6, g takes h6. Um, I guess we'll go in right away with queen h6. Um, maybe black plays bishop f5. Um, so an x-ray defense. And... Um, so, okay, bishop h6, g takes h6, queen h6, bishop f5. Maybe knight g5 there. Preparing to sack the exchange on, on f5. Yep, all your analysis are right. That's exactly that. Actually, we should take the six pawn text, queen text in memory. Okay. Uh, we're not calculating checks, but because there are no checks, we're not calculating captors because there are no captors. You see how the last uh, concept that we talk, it's not applicable always. Mm -hmm. It's not something that it's not something that we, it's going to cost us a lot of time. So after queen takes a six, I think that bishop f5 is a good way to to give at least the position a little bit for for black. Uh, in the game, actually, black didn't play bishop f5. Knight f5 is the move then, obviously, because you are keeping uh, bringing more pieces into attack. In the game, knight 6 was played, and I think that right now, um, the move is quite obvious. Yeah, just play knight, it's still knight g5. Yeah, it's still knight, knight g5. Yeah. Black keep playing a little bit, mm. keep playing a little bit with rook a, and then how can we finish the game, basically? There are several ways. Yeah, I mean, the first... Yeah, the first thing I look at is bishop g6, fg, queen takes uh, g6, and then um, yeah, we and then king h8, and then queen h7. Yeah, exactly. That's basically mm, the most um, forcing line. Yeah, bishop g6, and queen h7 is threatening, queen h8, then after the king go to f8. Yeah, so basically that's all. And the game rook f7, it's just a cool way to finish too. Bishop takes and then checkmate into. But basically, what I want to express to you with this concept is how, in a good position, we can have a lot of ideas, 
but we need again to arrange those ideas and play the best from time to play the best one because sometimes people in this position determine that they are going to play bishop g3 to open the light to f to the f rook which is i mean decent um most like for example a4 with the idea of a5 and a6 that's not quite decent but it's another idea and you see that after all these moves white the position for white is not bad but white is not doing the right moves or at least an active move so basically this is the concept once we get position white we are much better but we don't know what to do and there is not clear way to improve our position we look at our least active piece that we have and improve it that's all understood yeah okay so do you have any doubts something that it's not clear something that you want to ask me no ask no me. no that makes sense yeah okay great so i'm going to request you a little bit uh, a little break okay yeah Go sure some, uh, absolutely and... yeah get get a okay, drink so... Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, take your time. I'll be here. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll talk to chat. Okay, I'm back. Can you hear me? Yep, welcome back. Okay. All right. How do you feel? How are you doing under here? How? I, I, I'm fine. Uh, I, yeah, this is fun. Um, I've, uh, you have a different style. For, like, um, I had, you know, I have another coach. Um, mm -hmm. but I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just testing the water. He's just trying some other people and, uh, he's a little busy right now. And, uh, it's just interesting cause you know, coaches are different. So it's, it's, it's interesting to, to see a different style. Yeah. But the, uh, let me, <laughs> let me know different for bad, for good or for. No, di different, different, good, different, good. Yeah. I, I'll, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but definitely different. Like, uh, all of, uh, my other coach, Alessandro is, um, he, he, he speaks a lot slower. He's very, he really likes referencing the classical games and, mm. uh, it's just a different approach. It's just interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, probably also because I am a little bit younger maybe. And I, I mean, I've studied the classic games. But I think that right now in the modern chess, oh, there are many ways to train, basically. Um, and there are many ways to improve. And um, there is a quote, well, not, not a quote, but an interview that was, uh, you know, the grandmaster uh, Prang Nananda mm -hmm. from India. Yep. Well, he, he in that interview, uh, say that, said that he only trained by playing against the computer. And mm -hmm. basically, that's all the training that he applied. And by playing against the computer, he some sort of um, learn how the computer thinks, and that's why he improved a lot. So mm. yeah, that's interesting. That, that um, that's what I do a lot too. I guess a lot of people do that now, right? With stockfish. Yeah, yeah exactly. The thing is, the difficult part of this is that um, try to know why. Uh, yeah, exactly. Try to discover the ideas that the mm -hmm. computer has. Yeah. It's something that is quite difficult. But okay. Um, if I ask you what is the weak part of your game, I mean, uh, for example, for someone is the opening, for someone mm -hmm. is the tactics, for someone is strategy, what would you say? Yeah, I, I, as, as I said before, it, it, I certainly feel it's the tactics, um, the visualization and, and tactics. I. That's what my self-assessment is on my weakest part. I don't think anything comes close. Oh, um, okay. Sometimes I might stem away from the objective. You might think, uh, you might say like, I'm very materialistic, so I'll go pawn hunting. Like there's no tomorrow. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, okay. I, yeah. And I'll like, I play the poison pawn line in the, uh, the Bishop G5 Nidorf. Like, I, uh, yeah, I like material and um, every, almost every single gambit I will accept. The only one I don't is the, uh, the marshal. Every other one I, I, I accept. So <laughs> I'm very material, materialistic okay. and sometimes I can uh, maybe um, be a little bit too materialistic, but certainly I feel oh. that my, my tactics, I think that's really my weakest point. 
But being materialistic, at some point, it's good because actually, uh, there is another quote from the Gamma Fair. I don't remember the I remember the quotes, but I don't I don't remember the names mm. that say that the best way to play against a gambit is accepted and ah, uh, I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's the part with gambits. I also agree that we should accept uh, not all the gambits, but yeah, the majority of them, I think. And yes, just keep the pawn up and try to reach the end. That's mm -hmm. the skill. And well, um, I would like to distinguish between tactics and calculation because those are different things in chess. Are, yeah, they are together, but they are different. Because for tactics, if you say tactics, I'm trying to imagine, uh, for example, not to see a fork with a knight or not to see a, a, a pinned with a queen or something like that. While calculation is more mm -hmm. about the process that you apply in a real game to uh, think for many many moves, it doesn't matter uh, from yeah for many many moves, it doesn't matter that it's a tactical situation or not. So yeah, yeah. so um uh, to answer that, yeah, that's interesting um because yeah, I I don't blunder that much like missing a, a fork like of course it will happen, but I, it's not that often that I will just miss a very simple. Mm -hmm like a one move thread or even like a two move thing, but calculating, certainly calculating and visualizing is, is really, really weak for me. Um, I will, um, I will often, especially in a slower time control, like a classical or I will repeat my calculations many times over cause I'll, I'll lose track and I will do it many times over. I started to read a little bit of the Kotov's Think Like a Grandmaster, where he has a crazy methodical approach to that, but that got, that was insane to me. So I gave up on that pretty quickly. Um, his whole tree of logical thinking, uh, then that was, that was a yeah, bit insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And actually it's, uh, believe me that I don't find the fierce player that think in other way to be honest with you. They apply the concept that is shown in those in that in that book, for example. But it's not everything, okay? Because again, I'm a, I say that one of the most important part that a chef player should uh train, because it's trainable, it's intuition and visualization, those kind of things and creativity. I think that those are parts that might be trainable. I think that one can improve by for example um something that I recommend a lot for people who have problem with uh, visualization and those kind of stuff is to open an account on chess or chess.com uh, to play just blindfold games. Mm -hmm. It's a hard, hard way to train. It's yeah. horrible. <laughs> well, let <laughs> me, let me uh, interrupt you here. So I, I did a bit of this blindfold um, mm -hmm. and I managed to win one game. I have it on YouTube, but I actually, I, you might not have heard of this, but I actually have a condition called aphantasia, which is the inability to visualize anything. So um, it's, it's a small percentage of people that have this, like I think maybe 1% or so of the population, but I actually, I cannot see anything. Like even if I try so hard to visualize a circle or a square, I, I can, I literally just see black in my mind's Whoa. eye. Yeah, I, I do not see anything. Um, it's actually amazing that I was able to, that I can actually play a little bit of blindfold. It's but... impressive to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, the way I do it is I just mem I try to memorize where every single piece is. Um, but I, 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 I literally do not see anything though. And I think that it really affects my calculating. <laughs> Well, well it, it really, it's really impressive that you got a good rating on the chess, on light chess, uh, and even you won a blindfold game with that condition. It, it really, really, it's something that. Well, sorry, sorry, so sorry. My my opponent was like nine hundred or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, anyway, it's quite impressive, and more if we think that in chess, when we are calculating we can't move the pieces over the world. So basically we are playing with a board in our mind. And the thing that you have this condition and you're even playing at this level, it's really impressive for me. But it makes me, it makes me really uh, sad actually, because it makes me wonder, you know, it, it, do I have a very low cap because of this? You know what I mean? Like, mm, uh, yeah, I don't think so. I think, <laughs> I think that uh, anyway, we, 
we can improve with that. I mean, yeah, it's a condition that might be our process, might create our process a little bit slower, but I think that we can do it anyway. So, okay, let's start with some positions. Okay, this thing about calculation and tactics. More calculation than tactics, because if you tell me that you're not blunder at all and you are going to say, to see most of the time, a blue, a fork with a knife and things like that, mm. I think that the problem is more calculation than mm. just tactics. For example, this position, now we are going to, well, the games that we see, that we saw before, are also from real games, but now real, uh, real master games, basically. It's way to move. Yeah. Well, I'm quite sure that you already saw the first move. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm looking at, yeah, knight, knight g6 is the very first exactly. thing I look at, yeah. Great. The thing is, what is the next move then? What are the, what are, what is the whole line, basically? Knight takes g6, pawn takes g6, and mm -hmm. then? Yeah, queen g6, uh, king h8. Um, Great. I might go, I might look straight for a rook lift, like rook, rook e3, or sorry, rook d3. Um, I don't know if that's fast enough, though, because he's got a bishop that can go to h4. Um, okay, so, so, okay, so knight g6, h, h, g, queen takes g6, king h8. And we 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 draw. <laughs> <laughs> we take queen six, six. Uh, maybe the <laughs> opponent is Magnus Carlsen. I'm happy with the draw. <laughs> yeah. um, let's see. Um, there, there's uh, okay. Let me entertain Bishop H. Bishop H six. Um, so Bishop H six. Black has at least two moves here. Um, he's got he's got three I think he might have knight f five and he has bishop f six and he has rook uh, rook yeah. g seven yeah and you see that it's more complicated when we think about most like picture is six because black has many many replies mm. right mm -hmm. and in a real game we are not going to consider all of those replies I mean it would be a uh, an intensive, intensive walk. What we have to do in that position after King H8 is to stop and see what are, first of all, possible checks. In the position King H8, King G6, is that okay. rough? So more forcing Bishop moves first. Is that threat? Okay, so we have to be that in mind, but it's not the first thing that we need to calculate. So if we think about checks after King H8. Okay, well, I, I, I know that there was, there was Bishop E5, but I just kept looking at uh, bishop f6. And the position, again, we have to stop for a moment and see what are our possibilities. Okay, so let me do it again here. Knight, knight, knight takes g6, h takes g6, queen takes g6, king h8. If I go bishop e5 check, bishop f6. Um, we could go queen h6, uh, make time control. You know? <laughs> um, <laughs> king, uh, king g8. Um, um, and I, 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 I would assume, uh, the only thing I can come up with here is a rook lift, rook, rook, e, rook d3. Exactly, yeah. But uh, rook d3 is slow. better with the rook in on h8 or on g8? Uh, yeah, it's probably better on h8, so it can't get, it can't uh, uh, f uh, f yeah, uh, escape to to um, to the f file. Exactly. So, yeah. um, but that's the, that's what I looked at before. But I didn't think it worked. If if we go knight knight g six h h. So knight takes g6, h takes g6, queen takes g6, um, king h8, and if we go rook e3 right away, um, I'm just I was thinking if we had two free moves, I always thought that the bishop could just block. Although if it did block on h4, we always have g3. Yeah. 
Yeah, actually, it might work. So what about Rook F7? So after after Rook E3, Rook F7, uh -huh. and um, oh, but then we have then we have Queen H6 and then King G8. He's escaping though. So okay, yeah. So Queen H6, King G8, Rook G3 check. Um, King, if King F8, uh, then then, then Queen Queen H8. Yeah. And also the king can't go to f8 because yeah, oh, yeah, I, I couldn't. Queen on a6. Ah. Yeah. Uh, sorry, wait. Oh, what? oh, the queen is there. Ah, right. Okay. Um, the thing is that black is not going to play. Uh, once you play king a6 check, black is not going to play king e8. Black is going to play rook a7. Rook a7, sorry. Okay, so knight, knight g6, h takes g. This is the problem okay. I have. I. I if you know if i leave the position too long i have to go from the beginning <laughs> yeah um, yeah i see and that's why uh, there is a cool method that i, I call it, uh, it's not showing uh, i've not seen this in a in a book but it's something that i apply in my proper games is that once you get this position and you have um, at least two two ideas two two main lines what you have to do in your mind is to stop in that position try to and it's a hard work because you have the, this other condition, but try to mm. get the position in your brain, in your board, try to imagine where are the pieces. And that way, once you come back, you need to come back to this position, mm. not to the beginning. Yeah, I, that makes total sense to me. Um, yeah, the problem is, yeah, what's my thing? Like, I, yeah, I, can't, I can't trust myself because <laughs> I might put a piece somewhere else. Um, exactly. It's completely understandable. Yeah. I can do it I, like a little bit. Like I 100% I know what you're saying. And I, I can mm. do it in a simple position, um, you know, with less pieces on the board. I can do it. But um, it, it takes a lot of effort and time. But maybe that's something that can be developed as you get better. I'm not sure. But I know what you're saying. It's kind of like a shortcut. Don't go all the way back to the beginning. Go back to the just to the part. Yeah, yeah, to the last like good known position where you know exactly. you're better. Exactly. And also try to help with to help you with uh, uh, intuition and also a logic process. If you are going to sacrifice the knight, you know that you at least have a draw. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's it's you don't have to calculate every or this in a real game. Um, you, we are doing it right now because we are trying to try to improve our calculation, but it's not necessary in a real game. That's what I'm trying to mean. In a real game, if you have a sacrifice and, and you have a draw, go for it. It's something that I, I always recommend. Go for it, and then in the position when you know that you are attacking, try to see if there is a better continuation. If not, oh, make a draw oh, I, and improve oh. your calculation process. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, because you have nothing to lose. Exactly, mm -hmm. basically. Well, uh, a half point mm -hmm. yeah, to lose. But yeah, basically, that's all. King H8. And right now, both ideas are okay. Rook D3, Mary, or Bishop uh, A5. Rook D3, the only problem is that black can bring more pieces. Well, actually, we are hanging this bishop here. That's why Rook D3 is not possible. Uh, we have a fork on G3, maybe. So, fork on G3. Yeah, so Rook H, Rook H3. Oh, Rook he's four. he's got that. Uh, he's got H4, I see. Exactly. Yeah. That's why, first of all, bishop e5, okay? Also, we need to consider this first because it's a check. Bishop f6, and then your move, your idea. Something that is really, really impressive, rook d3. Now, once you know that this is a good idea and you are checkmating your opponent, you can conclude that you are winning. But in a real game, you probably are going to face a move, for example, like bishop c8. Oh, that's nasty. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I don't want you to panic, basically. Yeah, right? well, yeah. So I'm looking at uh, Queen, uh, uh -huh. Queen H6. Yeah, yeah. Several ways to win this. Queen H6, King G8. Yeah. So I'm a little worried about that flight square, but um, <laughs> okay. Uh, we could repeat just for the psychological. We show who's who's in control, <laughs> and then um, okay. So yeah, I'm worried about Rook G3 and then King. F seven. 
and um, an interesting move here, an idea that I saw in the woodpecker method is actually to play rook e1 there, just calmly cut off the king from escaping. Um, right, right. But I think that it actually might work. Yeah, I'm yeah, not sure if it works, work. but it's um, yeah, I've seen that in a couple of the woodpecker puzzles. But uh, we do have another check. We have um, we could go queen h7 right away. Check, and yeah, so he goes king e8 or king e7, and yeah, so I don't know rook e1 bishop. Oh, it's so a rookie one. Yeah, maybe bishop e7. Yeah. But that's, that's yeah, that's getting, oh, uh, that's getting really Yeah, hard. difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Many lines. I don't know. I, I don't know if we can continue from there. Um... Probably we can. Okay, probably there is a line there that we are going to, where we are going to win because the opponent's king is so so weak. But anyway, this is there is another quote. This is from Lasker, if I remember well. Uh, that say that once you find a good move, yeah, look you should try to one. find a better one. Yeah, so uh, I'm looking now at bishop f6 check, and then we oh, but it's the same thing. Oh wait, this position almost looks similar for a second there, but yeah, bishop f6. There's still that stupid bishop on c8. Um, mm -hmm. I almost wonder if, if we put the queen, we could put the queen on the H file and then the rook on the G files. For, for example, we might be able to play queen H, um, even queen H, uh, five. Indeed, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, let's, let's, let's say King G seven. Uh, rook g3, and um, he can't block with a bishop because our queen is covering it. So, king f7. King f7 is blocked. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, it's blocked. So I guess he does have to. He does have to block. So okay, so bishop f. Oh, sorry, bishop g5. Then it's possible bishop g5. Sorry. It's possible bishop g5 in the line. Yeah, and then rook g5. Rook takes g5 and uh, queen takes g5. And also we have to remember that the opponent's king is on g7 and we have a bishop on f5. So the bishop can't... can't oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, so, um, yeah, so queen queen h5, king g7, rook g3. And, um, yeah, there's... there's uh, He just has to play bishop g4 and then rook g4. And checkmate, yeah. yeah. That's the solution, right? <laughs> yeah, tricky. Tricky. There's a lot. There's a lot you have to consider. There's a lot of moves. Yeah. Exactly. And basically, uh, in, in this is the kind of position where you have, as you said, a lot of moves, but you have to find the way to complicate things less and try to just find a good line without complicating too much the things. Because if you go for king h6, which is probably the most natural, the most obvious move, then after king g8, you are going to discover that your position. Yes, you are winning, but you have to focus more basically. And you have this line, which is more, it's the easiest way to, to win, basically. Okay, great. So, how do you feel about, about this uh, about this process now, about this position? Do you have any doubts, something that is not clear? Well, it's just, it, well, that you want to discuss? I mean, it, it all makes sense to me, but it's just, yeah, it, I'm just so bad at calculating. It's, it's just, yeah, it's, we, it's, it, it's just my hardest, hardest thing in chess for me. We always are bad at, at calculating when we are playing chess, when we learn chess, basically. It's something, it's one of the most difficult parts, basically. So don't worry at all. But it's something that the only way to train this, it's by solving puzzles, solving puzzles, and not only solving, but uh, see your thought process and see how you, can, how you can improve your thought process, okay? It's the same that you apply by analyzing games, but analyzing positions that are, are not from your games, Mm. But position that you are going to basically discover bad habits that you apply. Okay. So let's move on to next position. 
This position are going to be more complicated. No oh boy. But <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it, the the goal is that the goal is to calculate as much as we can. So for example, right now, imagine that you are playing with white. Okay, how would you think here? Okay, I, I let me. Um, I will just explain my thought process out loud. Um, Great. So it, it doesn't mean it's a good move. It, I'm just telling you. Okay, so let's look at the first thing. I'm looking at bishop h7. Let's say king g or king f7. Um, and uh, queen. Yeah, queen. There's multiple things we could do, but let's say queen g6, king e7. At that point, we could go bishop takes g7. Um, and that might be winning there. Yeah, so bishop h7, king f7, queen g6, king e7, and bishop. Yeah, bishop takes g7. That looks good. So therefore, let's let's circle back and go bishop h7, king h8. And let's give another check. Bishop g7 check. Bishop takes g7. Um, we've got a lot of pieces, so let's sack another piece. Rook takes g7. <laughs> so let me just do that again. So bishop h7, king h8. Bishop takes g7. Bishop takes g7. Although that does give me another idea of now. <laughs> it's to actually stop my process and start with the rook check. Um, rook check and then bishop takes. Um, okay. Can I stop you there? Yeah, stop me. <laughs> okay. Actually, this is, I realize that you are, uh, this is a bad habit that most people, most people. Uh, I shouldn't have stopped calculating the other line. No, no. Okay. I mean, your calculation process is quite impressive because you are calculating uh, a large number of, of, of lines, which is quite impressive because uh, if you can calculate four or five moves in a head, that's, that's quite, quite impressive, brilliant. But the thing is that we are doing, we are doing immediately, okay? And in chess, one thing that helps a lot is before calculating, just see the position. There is a quote, oh man, <laughs> I'm gonna stop to say this, uh, from Jacob Agar, uh, which says that before learning how to calculate, we need to learn how to see. Mm. basically and it's a flyover in chess a lot okay because basically before calculating bishop a7 we need to see here okay what is happening in this position what are some factors that we can uh that are, what are some factors that might help us and that might not help us that much for example right now just to think generally about the position okay you have a bishop a6 that's great you have a battery here with the bishop and the queen you have the open light rook and you say that we are not uh, giving uh, lines, specific lines in, in right away. We are just seeing the position. Mm -hmm. But what about black? What Black has a good bishop here that with the combination of the queen can check meadows at some point. Okay. Mm. So we need to be alert of that in some lines. Okay. And now, for example, with that idea, we can say that actually if we are going to move uh, has, forward uh, and a check, we need to always be forcing. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you know, I, I actually did very very briefly look if black had anything but um i, I didn't see that stupid uh yeah queen a3 i'm surprised at that yeah because then it's going to force our king onto the d file and then there's rook d8 um so exactly yeah so the, yeah if i had seen that i i definitely would have been looking for forcing lines here um, exactly and you see how it's much easier mm -hmm. basically uh calculating after just thinking generally about the position and mm. another thing is that before going in manually to calculate bishop a 7 which is probably a good move, just find the candidate moves. I mean, all the possible moves that you can apply and trying to arrange that in a mental list. Okay, for example, bishop a 7 is a move. Mm -hmm. Rook g7 might be a move. Bishop take g7, well, uh, it's not a move because as we said, queen a3 and queen, b and queen e1. So basically, mm -hmm. if we look at checks, because we have to play checks, these are the only two possible options. Then, when you get this uh, idea, this mental list that these are the only two possi mm. possibilities that you need to calculate, you yeah. go for one. Okay? Yeah. 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 Uh, rook, rook, rook G7 is looking really good. Because um, Rook G7, 
Um, Bishop g7 is failing move, right? Well, no, but... he, he's got he's got King h8. Um, but then we can just go on h7, and it'll be mate in two, mate in three. So yeah. so yeah, so he has to take so so rook g7, bishop g7. And in that position, the same again, the same about uh before going immediately to one line, see the position and find the moves. Uh, although in the position it's more obvious because we have to only one move, right? I think, right? Mm -hmm. Which is oh. Uh... When, when we, well, yeah, well, if we want to give a check with bishop h7, exactly. king f7, um, maybe maybe we can play queen g6, king e7, bishop g5, uh, and then the king has to go to d7. And then uh, that's when I, I start losing the position. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember where all of our pieces are. Okay, then I have I gotta start from the beginning. Um, no, no worry, no okay, worry. So start from the beginning, but once you get a position where there is only one or two possibilities, try to take a peek to there. It's in, if it's possible. Okay, so rook g seven, uh -huh. bishop g seven, uh, bishop h seven, um, yeah, king f seven, queen g six, king e seven. Um, and actually there, uh -huh. I wonder if I could, could I not go queen g7 check? Exactly, um, taking the bishop. Yeah, and then he has, uh, two squares, so he could, he could, well, no, he only, no, he has to go to e8, so uh -huh. king e8. Um, okay. I'm trying to remember where. Oh, well, you're doing fantastic, really. I'm trying to remember where the. Um... Okay, uh, king. So king e8. So the queen is on g7. So we could we could play a lot of things. We could play, we could play uh, bishop h. Uh, sorry, bishop g6 check. Uh -huh. um, king probably One wants possible. to move, so king um, king e. Uh, sorry, king d8. Oh, I'm, I, I keep forget, I keep forgetting where the bishop and the queen are. Um, um, oh boy. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 it's, I, I kind of lose it there and that, uh, but it looks good enough that I could proceed with the move. So <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Sometimes we are not going to calculate everything. It's hard mm. to calculate everything in chess, but we have, we need to get a point where we know that we are ruining and mm. that is enough, basically, mm. as you say. Yeah. And yeah, th this line looks so, so good to not play it, basically. Queen e6, the move that you said, king e7, and queen e7. I remember that. Uh, first, you thought you told me bishop e5. Yeah, no, yeah. E5, yeah. We have to stop here and see what are all the possible checks. Bishop e5 doesn't work because bishop f6, for example. So queen e7 is more powerful, obviously. And then king e8. We didn't consider rook f7. What I mean, if in a in a real situation the opponents move king f7. Yeah, I was just gonna go bishop bishop g6. Exactly. Yeah. You can figure out what move to play. Mm -hmm. Then, basically, yeah, yeah, king e8. And then the move that you play, we should d6, uh, king d8. Oh, king, king f8. <laughs> I missed that, yeah. Yeah, uh, queen, queen f8. Sorry? A, a queen f8. Hi, hi. Can you hear? Yeah, I can hear. Can yeah, you hear me? Yeah, queen f8, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I then, uh, and then uh, queen, queen, queen d6, Basically. yeah. Exactly right. So... How do you feel about this thought process now, about this position? Well, you a lot because yeah, I fine. mean, yeah, like I, I really, like, I, 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 I lose the position after, I mean, it starts to get really difficult even after I do queen g7.
queen takes g7, I really start to lose track of everything from there. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, and it's understandable basically. Okay, it's not easy to go uh, for five, six moves. But again, these are little tips that I, I want you to use basically in your in your games. Is first of all, think generally about the position for some seconds. And then, yeah, I start to arrange your ideas. Don't follow one. Don't get immersed in one single idea, okay? If you see just visually seven, before calculating visually seven, you see, okay, but that's only an option. What are the other possible mm -hmm. options? In that way, if you don't find a good continuation after that move, you are going to be sure that you have more ideas, basically. Mm -hmm. And I can always go back to it, to the earlier idea. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's try it with one last position. Sure. Let's see. Uh, let me find a good one. A good, interesting one. <laughs> and for example, this one. He's, yeah, but interesting. Uh, okay, it's here. Sorry. Okay. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> kid in the candy store. So the very first thing I look at is, is 96. Obviously, that's the very first move. Um, right. I'm trying to give black the best move. Um, let's say, let's say bishop takes e6, but then that's, that's just mate. So I guess he has to go f takes. So 96. Actually, that's not true. He could move the king. He, he could just move the king, but then I'm just certainly winning because then I'm just up a minor piece. So let's say he takes it then. So knight e6, um, f takes. Um, I don't know. Everything looks good. I, I, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even, I wouldn't even really <laughs> calculate beyond that, honestly. Well, uh, uh, I mean, the rest of the <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I, it, it just seems, it just seems, it just seems winning to me. And how, how would you win? Because yeah, you can play with 96 and yeah. then figure out your moves in the, in the game. That's yeah. obvious. Yeah. yeah. But let's say that we want to imagine, um, basically we want to see everything. Before, okay. Before okay. 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 Um, okay. So 96, let's say F takes E6. Um, Let's take a look at rook or castles. <laughs> uh, castles. Um, rook f7. Um, and then rook takes d8. King. Oh, yeah. And then king g7. Then we can go rook takes c8. I mean, it just looks. I mean, we're just completely winning there. Uh -huh. um, now, there is the better. There, uh, is there a another better move. continuation on that? Yeah, let's see. Okay, so let's go with 96. Again, let's just take a look at f takes e6, castles. Um, maybe... Exactly, but in that position before oh. casting, right away... Oh, okay, instead of f takes... No, no, f takes oh. is the only possible Okay, f takes, that. instead of castling. Instead of casting, yeah, we need to stop there. Okay, well, the kid... Slow down the process. Yeah, so we could, we could also go rook d8. It just seemed too easy, so I didn't look at it, but rook takes d8, <laughs> and then... I guess that's mate in two. Yeah, then king f7, then, yeah, then, then castles. Yeah, Yeah, then castle and checkmate. Yeah, yeah. okay. Well, otherwise, we're going to win the game, but without a checkmate. Hmm. So imagine that you have 30 seconds in a bullet game. You want to checkmate before it happens, basically. Yeah, that's the solution. Much easier. But the thing is that the thing is uh, I want to... I want you to stop in your or slow down your calculation process a little bit because you cut because you calculate very well but you calculate too fast that you don't consider all the possible ideas i got too excited the position was here <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and it could happen in a real situation so it's something that i want to i want to avoid basically mm. okay so yeah well yeah well, thank we are almost yeah, I was just going yeah. to say, yeah, thank you very much for your time and also um, appearing on stream. Um, you can let me know if, if you want more students because, uh, you know, I could probably send some your way uh, if you're looking for some more. Um, and now that you have a better or I mean, this was our first lesson. 
that now that you have a, a you know, a, a decent understanding of what I'm like, um, that maybe that could help you um, give you an idea of what to work on in a future lesson, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think that uh, the thing that you do with your streaming is so, so helpful. Actually, as I said, I look I looked at some of your games that you were playing in some of your streaming, and I could mm. have an idea mm. of your basically mm. your style and the position that you like mm. to play. Mm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And and we didn't even we didn't even talk about openings, but um, I feel pretty confident about my openings. So okay. yeah, I, that's I know most players. Or like a lot of lower rated players really enjoy studying openings. I'm, I'm no exception. I, I really enjoy that as well. So, uh. Yeah, I think it's something that good. Well, I mean, it's we have to do it in a decent amount of time. I mean, we, we shouldn't spend many time, much time, uh, sorry, uh, um, analyzing an opening when we can use that time to, for example, improve for end games as skills or tactical skills. Yeah, like I, I, I probably, like I spend a, a good portion of my time on opening, like 80%, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, the only, like, yeah, I do very little other, I mean, I analyze my games after I play them, but uh, I spend way more time on, on just, because I, I find it so fun too, so it it's easier for me to put more time into it. Yeah. But, but yeah, again, thank you for your time, and we can maybe discuss uh, another lesson. And um, yeah, sure. It's it's late over there, right? It's ten p.m. Yeah, it's ten yeah. five p.m. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but yeah, it was nice meeting you. And um, yeah, I, I'm I'm glad to meet you too. It was a really really good time. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we'll stay in touch. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Thanks again. Bye bye. Bye. Have a good rest of the day.